Hey there, welcome in that uh, new Gaunt tutorial which will show how to use a go to behavior combined with a motion behavior. So, in some situations, uh, one don't want to use the full locomotion navigation go to system, which is uh, usually the recommended way, but sometimes you just have one motion and you want the characters to just follow a path without bothering too much about uh, the setup. So if you want to do this, you have to compromise on something. And here, what we will compromise about is gonna be the navigation. So keep in mind that what we'll do today will allow to follow a path and play a motion without altering it. But um, it may result in some collisions that we can probably fix in layout afterwards. So let's see how we can tackle this. I'll start in a fresh scene. So I just have an entity type created uh, with one character of the character pack and uh, I'll just uh, also have a Bezier curve in my setup. I create a population tool. Let's say we want to have a 5x5 five five grid. As we won't have any avoidance, let's put the characters apart from each other to reduce the chances of collisions and uh, orient them in the right direction. So if I press create, and I run the sum, I'll get uh, my characters appearing at the position. So, so far, so good. Next step will be to set up the behavior. So I mentioned that today we're gonna use the go-to behavior and the motion behavior combined together. So let's first uh, add the go-to behavior and configure it. Um, I'm gonna set the go-to behavior into the follow curve mode. I'm gonna select my Bezier curve and uh, and put it into my behavior. So now I'm saying I want to follow a curve and the curve will be uh, that Bezier curve. Great, and if I run the sum, I'll notice uh, that first, well, first I've got an error uh, saying that there's a missing terrain node uh, while using the go-to behavior. So the go-to behavior requires to have an, the information about the environment so it knows uh, what kind of path we can follow. Um, that uh, information is stored into a nav mesh, which is contained into the terrain locator node. And right now we don't have any terrain locator. So if you got your own geometry, you parse it with the nav mesh creator. Uh, let's say I just have to have an empty terrain. Uh, I just press the terrain node and now into my environment, I'll get um, terrain one, which has the nav mesh mode set to default plane. So um, now I'm, my go-to behavior knows that there aren't any obstacles into the scene. So far, so good. Um, if I run the sim, I'll notice that my characters are not moving because what's happening is that go-to behavior only compute one thing, which is the local target. So the local target is just um, a position at which my character needs to go locally and the combination of multiple local targets will lead me to my final destination. So here it's saying at the moment that um, my character here needs to go there because its local target is behind. So I'll, I'll speak about um, why it's actually going behind. So that behavior only does this. It computes just go to target, local targets and go local and the final go to target. Um, and it does not follow it. So what uh, we want to combine it with to follow it, just to test that it's working properly is the navigation behavior, but keep in mind that we're gonna remove it, the navigation behavior. That's just something that I want to add at the moment uh, to set up that my go-to setup uh, um, is correct. And it's not, we can see that some of my characters go behind. So let's take a look at the options that I have into my go-to behavior. And one is the curve start mode. So it's saying that here, I want all the characters to start from the beginning of the curve, which is not exactly what I need. What I would like to is um, them to get the closest points. So closest point mean that they are gonna um, look forward and see what's the closest point forward. I also would like to keep that shade that I had from the beginning. So I'm gonna um, um, enable the auto pass ladder offset and make sure that within the past following attributes, that spread ratio is set to one. So they're gonna spread along that curve. And now we can see that the go to local go-to target is evolving as soon as the character moves closer. And each uh, single character gets its own local target. Great, so this is good for the go-to setup. So I'm gonna remove that navigation behavior and now instead I'm gonna move into the motion 
uh, behavior that I mentioned. So I'm gonna load a walk normal. I'm gonna probably like randomize the start frame and run the sim. So we can see that my character has a local go to target. Um, my animation is kind of moving forward the curve, but it's just going straight. So at some point that local go to target will just stick to some position. So the go to behavior is saying, you know what, if you actually want to follow the rules that you've been providing me, you need to go that direction and reach an area which is uh, around this. But here the motion is just saying, oh, uh, I'm going straight. So what we'll need to do here is to influence the body orientation of my character to always um, to always go into the direction of the local go to target. So how do we do this? We're going to do this thanks to the channel operator behavior. I'm going to uh, add that new channel operator and it obviously has an output. So I'm going to expand this. That's going to open for me the chop editor. And here, this is what's going to be outputted from my uh, graph that I'm going to put here. So I can uh, click on that node and check uh, where do I want to put um, um, the, the result of the computation, which is going to be um, described here. So I've got multiple uh, outputs and one which is actually interesting for me is the body orientation. So if we're looking at the documentation for this, the body orientation, it will tell us that we need to get a um, word angle into this to specify what's going to be the body orientation. So let me show you how does it work. Um, let's set this up to float and put a value of like 45 degrees. So remember my characters, they're going into the direction which is specified um, by, by the pop tool. And here we, we can see that they go into 45 degrees uh, orientation. Let's say we put 90 and run the same. Now they're going at 90 degree in a uh, word angle. So we'll have to produce a dynamic value here, which will change uh, along uh, the curve. And uh, to do this, we'll just have to um, create a slightly more complicated graph. So we'll have to take advantage of that local go to um, target position, which is going to be a vector. And we can uh, also take advantage of the current position of the character and, and define what's the angle that we need to go. So uh, let's go into that uh, channel graph here, probably remove this one here, rename the sim. And what I'm gonna need is gonna be my entity position. So I need to uh, know what's my position currently. Uh, I can use the GOM channels to do that. And uh, amongst all the channels available, I can uh, start typing position. And now I can see I've got a this position. So this position, um, this dot position returns in uh, word uh, axis the um, 3D position of my character. So that's going to be a vector. I can also take advantage. Let's rename this local go to pass. Um, I'm going to take advantage of the channel to also extract my local go to targets. So this is a channel returned by uh, my simulation. And let me um, try to explain you what we're going to do next. So what we'll have, so we've got that, that position here, that position there, and what we need to build is the vector which goes from here and goes to there. And that vector provides an angle that we're going to convert as an angle, as a word uh, axis angle. And that angle of, um, of that uh, line here is just what we want to produce to the characters. So as I said, we need to cre first create a vector which goes from here to there. So we're going to create that vector by subtracting the two values. So first getting, um, let's invert those. First getting the local go to target, then getting the entity upon typos and subtract the two values. So that's provide that line. And now what we need to do is convert that line as a, <coughs> sorry, as a word angle. So we've got a converter node and it has a word direction to word angle. So this is exactly what we need to do and put this back into my body orientation there. And now we'll notice that as soon as my local go to target uh, changes, the orientation, the body orientation of my characters changes and they'll converge until the end of my curve. So as I said, it may reduce in some uh, collisions here. We can see two characters here are colliding. 
we can probably like combine this with some perception and maybe slow it down but really the purpose of that tutorial was to keep my animation and just uh, drive the body orientation based on this if we want to you know bring avoidance that will mean that we'll have to reduce the speed of the animation and so on um, also maybe just a quick thing we can do to uh, maybe improve that graph is um, you may notice that every time that local go to target changes um, the new orientation is applied right away to my character so it kind of move they may move pretty fast if the change of orientation is is um, is uh, high so if we want to remove if we want to avoid this and maybe smooth that out maybe we can take advantage of um, another node which is called the accumulator node which can take um, a couple of previous values and uh, average or whatever so here we're going to use the average mode so average mode will just um, you know smooth the values so anytime there's a bit change it will be smoothed based uh, on the values from the previous runs and uh, we should get something like a bit more realistic great excellent so that works pretty well so that's it for that tutorial hope that helps and uh, see you into the next video